when I was eight, we were on a camping trip with my family, and my, uh, my grandpa was there, I called him Papa, and my dad, uh, my cousin Justin, who's about the same age as I am, my sister and my cousin Amber, who were, are both older, and I let them know that regularly. Uh, my sister's about three years older. And we were all camping, and we got into a boat. So this was a fiberglass boat. It was a rowboat. There wasn't a motor on it. And we get out. I have my life jacket on, and we're in the boat, and we're with Papa and my dad, and everything's awesome. And we're rowing out into this beautiful day, this beautiful scene uh, in the Northwest. So you can envision this boat ride. As we started to uh, row out, we got out a ways from the shore, and everything looked really calm on top of the surface. Everything looked beautiful and perfect, but there was something happening underneath the water. This calm pond lake had an undercurrent, and it started, we, we, as we got away from shore, it, we just slowly rode out, but as we got away from shore, we started to drift. And it was this slow drift, and it started to get faster and faster and faster. And all of a sudden, Papa and my dad realize something's wrong. And so they start to try to row back to shore, but the current now is too fast. And we're coming around a bend, and we start to hear rushing water. We'll get back to that story in a minute. Today, we're going to talk about Noah. Yeah, Noah. Why are you guys so far up on your seats? You're like, really? No, I'm joking. I'm kidding. Noah, this, this is amazing. But there's, there's this thing, there's this progression that we've had in the last few stories, these epic stories, these big stories. And guys, we're like, we're like three or five pages into the Bible. <laughs> like, we're barely in. And there is so much that has happened. But Noah is this awesome character. But what, what is leading to Noah, his story, is the fall of man. Sin has now entered. And there is this process when sin enters that it just is destructive. It starts with a bite of an apple. It turns into murder. And then in Genesis 6, 5, it says, The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth, and he saw that everything they thought or imagined was completely and totally evil. That's amazing. Like, there, there, that, like, is a moment to stop and pause. Like, you guys all got here with relatively no evil thoughts. In this day and age, it was every single thing they thought of, every action, every single piece of their life was bent towards evil. We are historically horrible at defining good and evil without the Holy Spirit. <laughs> We're going, we drift towards sin. It's this slow drift. I, I, I can't imagine the heart of God in this moment. This, he sees what was good and just slowly decaying, slowly decaying. It actually goes on uh, to, to kind of pile this on. I, I want you to feel this because in Genesis 6, 11 through 13, it said, Now God saw the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. So he saw total evil and now corrupt with violence. God observed all this corruption in the world for everyone on earth was corrupt. So God said to Noah, I have decided to destroy all living creatures for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out among the earth. You're going, Brandon, this is a, it's so encouraging. Yeah, this is, this is the, we always paint the nursery with the cute animals and the, and the cute boat to come float on the water with the cute, yeah, you know. And really it should be like, no, wait, hold on. So my first point is the trajectory of sin is destruction. So what, on that boat we're rowing, what looked like a calm lake, actually the trajectory was destruction. It was leading us to something that was dangerous. It was leading us to um, something scary. Actually, this is so interesting. In the New Testament, 
they look back at this story in, in Matthew 24, 38 through 39. It says, in those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. Then this, listen, that is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. Oh, warning. This is something to take seriously. The wedding's planned. How many of you right now have a wedding to go to? It's coming up. You've got the invite. The, the, yeah, I've got a wedding to go to. It's coming up. I'm, I'm thinking of this. How many of you have kids that may or may not go back to school in the fall? <laughs> How many of you guys are back to work uh, at some function of work? Life has gone on. Who's been to the grocery store? <laughs> okay, just checking. I'm coming over. I'm hungry. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, Brandon, if it's so subtle, what chance do I have? Could I give you just small advices? Sometimes... We don't notice the small choices that lead us away from God. They are small. So this could be like, it's a little lie. It's a, a little flirting. It's a little gossip. It's a little, you fill in the blank. And all of a sudden, those little things pile up. That little lie, now you're sitting in the interview and you have to prove that you know Mandarin. <laughs> that might be a bigger lie than the little, that was a big one. But those little things, they add up, they add up and they become a slow drift, a slow undercurrent. It looks calm on the top, but underneath it's, it's dangerous. So in this time, let me tell you about Noah. This guy, dude, I don't know, like, sometimes we've heard these stories so, so often, like, when we get to them in the scripture, we're just like, yeah, 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 you read them. But really, th this story is, is impressive. And actually, in, it, this story goes all the way from really Genesis 5 all the way to about 9. And so I'm not going to read you the whole thing. You're like, oh, praise the Lord. Um, but I want you to go back sometime this week and read this story because uh, there's things that even I've inferred on this story that are not accurate. It's like, no, that's not what the scripture says. Let's clarify. Uh, but this, this verse right here is for you guys. I just, Genesis 5.32, it said, after Noah was 500 years old, he became the father of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. That last name gives you a lift no matter what. And this is also proof that you're never ready to have kids. That is, so he was older. Genesis 6, 8 through 9, it says, But Noah found favor with the Lord. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless per person living on earth at the time. And he walked in close fellowship with God. Wow, what high praise of Noah. Wow. And it, so we just heard, we just heard the entire earth was so corrupt, so evil so bent on doing wrong, the exact opposite of the character of God, but then, big word, juxtaposition, Noah sets himself apart and goes, I follow God. Do you know the pressure that that was? How many of you have ever been to a, a party maybe you shouldn't have been to? How many of you did things you probably shouldn't have done because other people were doing it? How many of you have sat at a table and gossiped when you probably should have walked away? Pressure. <laughs> and those are moments where even you felt safe. When the whole world literally was against Noah, he goes, this is who I am. That's, oh, that's high praise. That's what I want to be. He was righteous, he was obedient, he was favored, and he had follow through. So let's recap, because I can't read the whole story, but I want to talk to you about parts of it. So, God sees the earth as evil. Recap. Bad. 
God says, I got a plan. We're going to do a, a quick reset button. The Nintendo has been pushed. He sees Noah. He goes, but I see Noah. I got a plan. Hey, Noah, build me a boat. Not a small boat, a big boat. I think I have a picture of the, an idea of the boat. It's, it'll come. Build a boat. That, you can actually go see this in Kansas, I believe, unless it's floated away. Um, but you can see, like, the size. So this is supposed to be to scale. I have no idea. And so build a boat. Get your family. I'm going to send you some animals and get food ready. It said in Genesis 6:20, pairs of every kind of bird and every kind of animal and every kind of small animal that scurries along the ground will come to you to be kept alive and be sure to take on board enough food for you and your family and for all the animals. What in the extensive meal planning? <laughs> who who cooks? Who, okay, raise your hand if you grocery shop and you cook. Okay, I'm I'm the grocery shopper. I'm the cook. E Elaine helps sometimes, but sometimes, sometimes that's not bad. I I do that. Um, uh, I enjoy it actually. I don't enjoy the prep. I don't enjoy the the grocery shopping. I don't enjoy those moments. But I feed a family of five, no animals, and it is brutal to figure out the week. It's like, when's the last time we had spaghetti? Well, every other day from the last six months. Or it's, it's figuring out. Noah had to plan months, ten, roughly 10 months in a boat with every kind of animal you can imagine and a family. Whew. Whew. Get ready for that cruise. And this is, this is more high praise of Noah. I want you to hear this. Noah did everything exactly as God had commanded him. Can you guys say exactly? Exactly. When's the last time you did something exactly? I had to think about it. I'm like, I haven't done something exactly in quite a while. Get ready for the flood. He did. And then once again, it goes, he did everything the Lord asked of him again. What I love about this is obedience plus consistency equaled good character in a difficult time to live. This leads me to my second point. Hearing and obeying God will lead to safety. What I love about this story is God always provides for what he's called you to. So he said, go get some gopher wood and build me a boat. It's also been said Cyprus, but I like gopher wood. Gopher wood's hard to find. First, you got to find a gopher, I think. I don't, actually, I have no idea. But he didn't put him in a place where there was no provision for this boat. That is a big boat. And God had provision. There have been countless times that God provides right on time. Maybe it's a, a, a word. This morning, there was an awesome word that was right on time over, over Elaine and I. Right on time. Their finances, right on time. God provides right on time. What is it that you truly need? Not what you think you want, but what you truly need. God will provide right on time. So Noah and his family and all the animals, they got on the boat. And it says this, the Lord closed the door behind them. That's the first automatic door. I cracked myself up. So we're in that boat. We're rowing. I've got my, my family with me. We're rowing. Well, I'm not rowing. Papa and my dad are. And it's drifting. And it's getting fast. We hear this rushing water. And Papa gets to this point where the lake has now started to shrink into what we would call a river. And it's moving quickly. So he grabs my cousin Justin, who's, we're, we're about seven, so we're not, not very big. He grabs him by the, the shirt or the, the life jacket and throws him to shore. Justin gets up and he goes, go get help. And 
We come around the bend and there's now we're seeing logs. We're seeing problem. There's stuff going on. And he puts me up on the log and my cousin Amber up on the log. Go, climb to shore, climb to shore. And as this happens, the front of the boat hits this log jam that is stopping and causing this rushing. And the boat starts pounding against it. And my dad grabs my sister and goes under the water and holds onto the logs. And, and, and my grandpa is there. One thing I know is when all this was going on, we heard Papa and we obeyed. We hear and we obey. Genesis 7, 23, God wiped out every living thing on earth, people, livestock, small animals that scurry along the ground and the birds of the sky were all destroyed. The only people who survived were Noah and those with him in the boat. Man, this must, this must have grieved God's heart. Up to this point, his creation he had built was good. Over and over again, he had said it was good and the destruction of sin came in and changed it. It must have been extremely heartbreaking. Some people might read this passage and they go, oh, God's heartless. No, no, no. This was devastating. So the waters rose and there's this flood and the boat's up and it's been there for a long time. Everything's wiped out now, it's gone. After another 40 days, Noah opened the window he made the boat and released a raven. The bird flew back and forth until the floodwaters on the earth had dried up. This was the first drone. You had the first automatic door, now you got a drone. Even in, we've been in quarantine now how long? Long time? Six years? Okay. I think it's been like four to five months. Yeah. Noah was on the boat for... 10, 11 months. This is amazing thing. The, the water started receding and going down. Dry land started to show up. A dove was sent out and an olive branch was brought back. They didn't leave the boat. They saw dry ground. They didn't leave the boat. Then God said to Noah, leave the boat. He waited to hear from God even though when we, what we see is potentially good, they waited on God and they waited. And then Noah got out and he built an altar. And the first thing he did on dry ground was praise God. God made a promise, I'll never again curse the ground because of human race. Even though everything that they think or imagine is bent towards evil from childhood, I'll never again destroy all living things. Isn't it interesting that God even still knew the heart of man and the mind of man to be evil? But in that moment, he had another plan. He had another plan. And that leads me to my last point. Jesus is our lifeboat. Jesus is our lifeboat. So the rowboat is completely destroyed. It's, it's wreckage. My dad is underwater holding my sister as tight as he can in the log. And Papa, he was a very strong man and very full of ready to help juice. I think that would be called adrenaline. And he reaches down and he pulls my dad and my sister out and sets them on a log and, and saves all of us. What we thought was just a leisurely boat ride turned into needing a savior. Our boat isn't gonna make it on its own. We all have a tendency to gravitate towards sin and we can't fight that drift on our own. God needed a better plan. He had a great plan and that was sending Jesus to save us all. What water and animal sacrifice couldn't accomplish, Jesus came and corrected the enormous issue of sin.
what we've celebrated pretty much from the start to the finish of this service has been Jesus sacrificing, giving his life, that bread we took, that body that was broken and hung on a cross, that blood that was represented by the juice that we drank is a, is a representation of washing of sin. It's so easy to drift towards it, but we have the perfect savior with the perfect example. With the perfect example, the perfect example. And when we look to him, he fulfills us. He washes us clean. He makes us new. He saves us from our own destruction. And this morning, I wanna give you an opportunity I wanna give you an opportunity. If you've never accepted Jesus as your savior, it's as simple as this. It says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he died for us, that he died for the sins of the world. He became the perfect flood, the perfect washer. And we don't have to, well, we die to ourselves, but it's a little less graphic than a flood. But it should give you that symbolism in your mind. If that's you today or online, I wanna give you guys that opportunity. And in the house, we're just gonna all stand up. We're gonna stand, we're gonna, we're gonna change our position to be, be, to be able to receive. And if that's you in this house with nobody looking around, if that's you, would you just wave at me or put a hand up so I know who's praying today? Awesome, awesome. And we're gonna do this. Like I said, if we confess with our mouth, so we're all gonna pray this prayer together. We're all gonna pray it together out loud, online even too, as you sit in front of your computer or your TV or your phone, say this out loud. Dear Jesus, I have sinned, but you came to correct the issue of sin. Please forgive me and help me live for you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. And I want to, to talk about one, one last quick thing. When this whole flood was going on, there's this really small passage and it's Genesis 8.1. And it says this, but God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and livestock with him in that boat. He sent a wind to blow across the earth and the flood waters began to recede. So if you feel like there's a flood around you or maybe those decisions you've made, those small decisions that lie, that gossip, maybe that time on social media that you shouldn't have had, maybe that comment you made that you should have kept to yourself. God sees you and he gives you an opportunity to go get in my boat, get in my boat. It's so easy to be swept away into so many different things. God's saying, get in my boat. So if, if that's you, if, if there's been drift, if there's been a slow drift in your life, I'm not gonna make you raise your hand. I'm just gonna assume it happens because it creeps in so easy. It's, there's areas in my life that need to come into alignment and I need to get in the boat with Jesus. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are a God. No matter sin, no matter what, God, you love us so much. You love us so much that you died for us, that you came for us, that you are our rescuer. God, I thank you for that. You are a God we can trust. You are a God that... Uh, that leads us forward, that you are a protector, you are a rock, Father. And so God, I just pray right now, I pray over every individual that the decisions and the things that are going on in people's lives today, that those little decisions that lead up to big, bigger things, God, I pray that they all direct them to you. There's a, there, every action will lead them closer to you, God. Every decision will lead them closer to you. 
every word out of their mouth will lead them closer to you, Father God. When we pray, when we worship, when we're in private or in public, when we feel alone, God, let this be the cry of our heart that we will have a deeper relationship with you. And as we align with you, Father God, we know that you are our lifeboat. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. What an amazing message, Pastor Garen. I know, the, let's give him a round of applause. Let's make some noise. It blessed me. I know it blessed you guys too. Well, hey, so if it's your first time or if you've been here for a while and, and just want to reconnect, uh, and if you're online and you're tuning in for the first time or you made a re uh, decision for Jesus today, I want to invite you to go on our app or go on our website, fill out the connect card and let us know. We want to pray for you. We want to get to know you a little bit. Also right now, if you're online, on YouTube, we have Kids Church Online. So go get on there. Your kids are going to love how fun it is. Without all being said, we'll see you guys next week. We love you guys so much.